solving equations by using addition. So I always like to start off with this when we're learning how to solve equations. The next video we're going to do solving equations by subtraction. And then finally we'll combine both of these into something a little bit more complicated. So let's get started. You got x minus 12. x minus 12 is equal to 8. You got this variable, right, which is an unknown number. If we don't know what something is, we give it, we make it a variable. So let's just think about what's happening here. Well, we started off at some number. We took 12 away from it, and now we're left with 8. I always like to think of especially simple things like this in terms of numbers. Let's say like our dollars. I had some money. I spent 12 bucks. Now I'm left with 8. Well, how much, how much did I start off with? Well, some number minus 12 is equal to 8. A couple of ways to think about this. The inverse operation of subtraction is addition. So if I subtracted 12 and I got 8, to figure out what I started with, I need to add 12, right? So when I do that, I started off with 20 bucks, right? Which is, in essence, what we're doing with this equation. You got x minus 12 is equal to 8. We're going to use our inverse operations to get x by itself. And what we mean by that is it's like we like to think that x was originally by itself. Somebody came along, did some stuff mathematically, and got x looking like this equation. Well, if you're subtracting 12 from x to get x by itself, you got to add 12. What you do to one side of the equation, you got to do to the other. So we got x is equal to 20 once again. Here you got x minus 3 is equal to 4. Right, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so we got x minus 3 is equal to 4. Well, if we have 4, so we got 4, we want to add 3 to both sides, right? We got x is equal to 7. And that makes sense, because if we're going to continue our model, 5, 6, 7, right? We take away 3 from our model, we're still left with x is equal to 4. Another way to do this model, is, and this kind of works with these smaller problems, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Well, you're subtracting 3, so when you add 1, 2, 3 more to it, you come up with 7, right? But once again, it's really, we're just doing inverse operations. So x minus 3, you add 3 to both sides, that x is equal to 7. Let's look at our next example. Well, we got x minus 6 is equal to 0. So I started off with some money, spent 6 bucks, and now I'm broke. How much money did I spend? Spent $6, right? And we still do this by using our inverse operations. You got x minus 6 is equal to 0. Add 6 to both sides. x is equal to 6. Last problem, x minus 9 is equal to 6. Got our unknown quantity, we're taking 9 away from it, and we've got 6 left, right? So we're going to use our inverse operations. We got a minus 9. If we're subtracting 9 from x to get x by itself, you got to add 9. So sometimes people like to draw a line down through here. You don't have to, but x minus 9, subtract, is just left with x, right? 9 minus 9 is 0. If you added a 9 over here, you got to add a 9 over here, right? 6 plus 9 is 15. We'll check our answer. 15 minus 9, and that is equal to 6. So x must be equal to 15. Next presentation, we'll do solving equations by subtraction.